Okay, it's time to dive in and learn the basics of core data. And we're gonna do this by integrating core data into a project. Now, when you're creating new app projects, you have the option to integrate core data at the time of project creation, but there's gonna be a lot of times when you need to add core data to your project after your project has been created. Thankfully, this is actually really easy to, easy to do. When you create a project with core data enabled, all Xcode is doing is including a few objects and writing some boil, boilerplate code for you. The following videos, you'll do this yourself. And thankfully, you'll see that it's really not that hard. In this series, we're going to be working with this app called Pet Pal, and you can see I have it running. The idea behind this app is that we can add friends, and we add friends by simply tapping this plus sign here. And to keep track of their pets, we can tap on them, and then we can add pets like so. Now, you'll notice that there's a big problem with the app. If I stop this and I run it again, what's going to happen is all the data that I've accrued since I last used it is gone. I need to basically add my friends and their pets all over again. So that's not exactly a great user experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to add core data to this. Now, there's a couple ways you can add core data to an app. The first way is to add core data once you, once you actually create the app itself. So if I went to File, New, Project here, you'll see, a, let's just select Single View App. You'll see we have this option, Use Core Data. And when you check that, and basically what will happen is Xcode will configure your project and add boilerplate code and so forth to get core data all up and running. In our case, we don't have that option. We already have a pre-existing app. So what we need to do is integrate core data into our app, and that's what we're gonna do now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my resources folder here, and I'm going to right click. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna select a new file, and you can see we have all the various file types we can add to our project. You'll notice that we have one called core data. And this is exactly what we're looking for going to select data model and click next. Now this is the point where we can give a name for it. We're going to name the data model as pet pal like so. And I'll choose create. Okay, so we've added our data model and you can see we have an interesting interface. We have entities, fetch requests, con configurations, and we have this other tab over here for entities in and down here, you can see we have an outline style. We can add entity, add attributes, and the editor style. Now, we're going to be going through all this throughout this series. It's just a way of interfacing with core data. All right, the first thing we want to do is add an entity. Now, an entity is just a basic core data class, and this is a managed class. Core data does all the handling of stuff in the background for us. So what we do is we just click this add entity plus sign down here. And you can see we have the name Entity. Not exactly very descriptive. What I want to do is just double click this and I wanna give it the name Friend. So this entity is gonna represent all my friends. So now what I'd like to do is configure some things about my friend. And what I can do is here in this right pane, I'm gonna open up the Data Model Inspector and this is the third tab here. And you can see we have information about the entity, the class itself and various other fields. First thing I'm going to do is set the current module. So under this module, under the class here, I'm going to select current product module, like so. Next, I want to set the code generation. Right now we have class definition. I'm going to set this to manual none. Essentially what the code gen does is create our code for us. And we're going to manually kick off that process. Okay, I want to give an attribute to my friend. So here in this attribute section, I'm going to click this plus sign, and for the attribute name, I'm gonna call this name. And for a type, you can see we have various different data types we can use. I'm gonna choose a string. Now you'll notice that with this selected, our data model inspector has changed to fit the attribute. And you can see by default, this is an optional. So I'm gonna uncheck this. Now with everything set up, I'm gonna generate my code. I'm gonna select the editor menu and you can see that this is changed to reflect core data properties and things that you would do with core data. I'm gonna choose create NS managed object subclass. And you can see here, it's gonna ask me the data model and I'm just gonna choose next. And then I'm gonna check my friend because I wanna generate this class and then I'll just click create. 
And you can see here, I have two new files. We'll just drag these here. I have a friend core data class and a friend core data properties. The friend core data class, this is only generated if it's not there. So if you don't have, say, a friend class already generated for you, core data will generate it. So this is only basically done once. Core data properties is generated every time you regenerate your NS managed object subclasses. So essentially, you do not want to put any code in here. You want to put your custom code in here. So what is an NS managed object? Well, I'm glad you asked because that is the subject of the next video.